Hi everybody, Merry Christmas, and thank you for inviting us into your homes on this special day. We couldn't miss this opportunity to celebrate with you, so we've prepared a special online Christmas service. We know everyone's Christmas day can look a little bit different, so for planning purposes, here's what you can expect. The next 30 minutes or so will uh, include a short version of Joy to the World, then a message from each of our campus pastors, closing with a, a message from Pastor Jeff. But before we begin, we have a couple of important things that, to make you aware of. It's hard to believe it, but next week will be the start of the new year. And on Sunday, January 1st, we will be holding in-person services at 10 a.m. at all of our campuses, except our South Street campus, which will keep its normal time of 9 a.m. And there will be kids programming available at all of those services. And throughout this month, we've been talking a lot about the expansion of Hope School in Africa and how our global workers, Doug and Carrie, have started this school this past September with only about 200 kids, and it's already making an impact in the community. And our project would help them enroll 1,500 kids. Well, it's not too late to join. If you'd like to support this work in Africa, you can select the link in the description below, or you can give using the Chapel Street Church app and select the fund, Serve the World. Lastly, if you are new or would like to connect with Pastor Stetson directly, you can text HELLO to the number showing on the screen. If you haven't done so already, gather those who are with you and let's join together and proclaim joy to the world. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas! Enjoy the service. Merry Christmas, everyone, from the Moore family. And thank you, Anton, for that incredible rendition, fun rendition of Joy to the World, and what a perfect way to, to come into Christmas morning. And I hope for each of you, no matter where you're at or who you're with, that today is a day when you've been able to have some time to just reflect on the gift of Christmas, who Jesus is, and what he has accomplished on our behalf. I was thinking a lot about the Christmas season and what I love about it. And, and I know that there are a number of things that in our cultural celebration of Christmas, we feel like we get wrong, things that can distract us or materialism. And, and it's so easy in so many ways for us to forget about what Christmas is really all about. And yet I think there is some components or aspects of our celebration of Christmas that, that actually invite us into the experience of, of what the people of God were longing for and waiting for all those years and what you and I are invited back into every Advent season and really throughout our lives every day. 
You know, one of my favorite stories, one of my favorite Christmas stories, involves uh, my middle daughter, Lainey. When she was probably just three or four years old and we were gonna decorate the Christmas tree, the night before I decided to pull it out and start setting it up just when she was getting ready for bed. Lainey was standing at the top of the stairs looking down and as she saw the Christmas tree start to be assembled and come together. I could see in her little footy pajamas, her eyes get wide as she looked down and just had this expression of joy on her face as she said, I'm so excited. You know, that sense of like anticipation of, of the expectation that something is on its way. That's one of the aspects that I think particularly for our kids is that Christmas can evoke in them. There's this awareness, this sense that something around them is happening, a reason to be excited, something that they're looking forward to. And that same sense of anticipation was something that the people of Israel, that they, that they leaned into and experienced as they waited for their Messiah to arrive, their long-awaited Messiah. In fact, when you think about what they anticipated, what it was that they looked forward to, I'm reminded of the words of the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 9, as he's describing the source of this anticipation, right? he says in verse 6, For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The dominion will be vast, and its prosperity will never end, and he will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forevermore. The zeal of the, of the Lord of the armies will accomplish this. When you start to think about all that Israel and the people of God were experiencing at this time in their life, and then to hear Isaiah describe the one who would arrive, the sense of anticipation, the sense of what, what they were waiting for, what was in front of them, had to be so overwhelming. In fact, these words would inspire hope in the people of God from generation to generation. If you've been with us over this Advent season, you've heard us talk about how we are a people between the Advents. How we too, even on this side of the arrival of the Messiah that we celebrate and we remember, we thank him for our salvation. We also are looking forward. Pastor Brian in just a little while is going to talk about a future hope. But for now, I just want to invite you and your family and, and whoever you're with this morning to take a moment to, to enter in into that sense of anticipation, that, that idea of what remains to come. Because one day he is going to come again and he's going to set all things right and there's going to be perfect justice, perfect righteousness. And we are a people looking forward, longing, waiting for that day. And so we celebrate, we remember his arrival here on earth in the flesh to be our Redeemer, our Messiah, and our salvation. And we wait for the day where he will return again to restore all things. So I hope you all have a Merry Christmas. I'm going to pass things off to Pastor Andrew now, where he's going to talk a little bit about the realization of joy in the person of Christ. I don't know what Christmas morning looks like for you guys, but in my house, it's pretty chaotic. We got four young kids who are bursting to open their gifts from like 5 a.m. in the morning. And so after two really strong cups of coffee, Jenna and I lead them downstairs with the very clear instructions that we have to wait until everybody is ready. Of course, this never happens. And then usually within about 30 seconds of getting started, every square inch of the living room floor is covered in wrapping paper. We have to kind of poke around, make sure that the little one hasn't disappeared somewhere underneath it. And then there's the gifts that don't just need unwrapping, but it needs dad to screw it together, put the batteries in. And even after we get through all of that, it's off to grandma's house for round two of the whole thing. 
it's pretty chaotic. But it's still one of my favorite mornings of the year because I love to see the grin of joy on my kids' faces when they realize that they've finally received what they've been hoping for. And that's really what Christmas is, is a choice of perspective. Whether we're gonna see the chaos or whether we're gonna see the gift that we've received. If you think with me, the first Christmas was pretty chaotic too. There was hundreds if not thousands of people traveling all over the country to try and get back to their hometown for a census. And because of that, there was a small town that was so full of people there was no room for any new guests. There was the ongoing experience of a Roman occupation and all the fear and frustrations that come with that on a daily basis. And then in a small corner of Bethlehem was a young mother giving birth to her first son in conditions that were far less than ideal, probably what she'd never imagined for herself. And yet we're told that the arrival of that child wasn't just one more moment of chaos amidst the chaotic world, but it was the arrival of everything that every heart had ever longed for. It was good news of great joy, we're told by angels again and again. They tell Zachariah in the temple, they tell Mary, and on this very night, they tell the shepherds, tie it out in a field, that they have good news of great joy. And I love that those shepherds' response is a challenge for all of us to change our perspective. Because this is what they say in Luke chapter 2. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. The true joy of Christmas is really that God has stepped into our world, that he has come to give us what we truly need, what we long for. And the choice for all of us is whether we're going to join those shepherds and see it for ourselves. Amidst our chaos and our busyness and everything else that's going on in our world, will we see what the Lord has done? Will we see what he's given us? You know, there's uh, a really great moment in one of the ends of my favorite stories, uh, The Lord of the Rings, where this small hobbit, after the destruction of the ring and the defeat of evil, he has this realization and he says to Gandalf, is everything sad going to come untrue? And Gandalf replies to him, a great shadow has departed. You know, J.R. Tolkien, who wrote The Lord of the Rings, was a Christian. And whether intentionally or not, that little moment in Lord of the Rings captures really what the heart of Christmas is. Because the arrival of Jesus, the gift of God's Son, is the realization that everything sad is going to come untrue. That the shadows are departing. And so for us this morning, the challenge is to change our perspective, to join with these shepherds. I don't know what your Christmas morning looks like, but I'm sure you have your own brand of chaos to deal with. Whether it's young kids, whether it's pains, whether it's burdens. And the invitation that God has given all of us this morning is the same as those shepherds. Come and see. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see this good news of great joy. God has stepped into our world to change the story, to bring light and darkness, to bring hope to the hopeless. And so I hope like me this morning that you will come and see, that you will run to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. Merry Christmas. There we go. Well, when I was growing up, uh, my dad loved to make Christmas special for me and my two younger brothers. He didn't have the resources to give us extravagant or expensive gifts, but he had a real good knack for finding stuff that was just fun for us to get on Christmas Day. He also had developed this little tradition of putting out one special gift unwrapped on Christmas Eve so we would find it first thing Christmas morning. I think that started with a, a toy called a snurfer, which was kind of a prehistoric snowboard, too big to wrap, and so he just put it out under the tree and he saw our excitement, so that became a little tradition. So we'd go to bed on Christmas Eve uh, just filled with anticipation, that, that, like Sterling was talking about, filled with anticipation that, that in the morning when we woke up it would be there, that special gift unwrapped by the tree. And one Christmas this was the unwrapped grif, the gift. The Rock'em Sock'em Robots, the Blue Bomber and the Red Rocker, 
this just two plastic robots in a boxing ring that had controls and you could punch and punch and punch until the other guy's head came up and then you would box some more. And we had so much fun playing that. I don't know how long it lasted. That toy might have lasted two weeks, maybe three weeks. And then the heads got stuck in the up position and the arms fell off and we just put it in the attic and who knows, maybe it wound up in a landfill. But we had a great time while we played that toy. It was one of our all time favorites. Well, time went by and my brothers and I grew up and we went on to have our own families and start our own Christmas traditions. And then some 40 years later, about, imagine my surprise when I discovered that a toy company had reissued Rock'em Sock'em Robots. And just in time for Christmas, I was so excited that I went out and I bought two of them, one to give to my young sons and one to send to my brother Joe in Ohio because I knew that he would remember the fun that we had playing that toy. And in a way, uh, this little toy uh, reminds us of some of the hope of Christmas time, some of the hope that Advent brings. We celebrate at Christmas time what we call the first Advent, that is Jesus coming into the world the holy child born of Mary, laid in a manger, uh, to fulfill the promise of a Messiah, of a Savior. We celebrate Jesus' birth because it means that God came near to be with us, that we can know Him and live in relationship with Him. We celebrate Jesus' birth because it tells us that He came to save us from our sin. We celebrate because we know that Jesus grew up, went to the cross, died, and rose again, from the dead to give us this great hope of eternal life. And we celebrate with joy because in Jesus we have peace with God. But here's the thing. The first advent, Jesus' first coming into the world, comes with a promise. The promise of a second advent. In Acts chapter 1, just after Jesus ascends into heaven, an angel speaks to his disciples and says, this same Jesus will come back the same way you saw him go into heaven. And Jesus himself says, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come back to take you to be where I am. Jesus promised to come again. He promised several times to come again. Not as a child born in great humility, but rather as the risen King of heaven coming in glory to redeem all things. The Apostle Paul, in fact, reminds us that we are living between these two advents. We are living between the first coming of Jesus and his second coming. In Titus chapter 2 in the, second, in the New Testament, Paul tells us that we are, all of us, waiting for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The blessed hope of Jesus coming again. Many of you know, I think, that I lost my dad uh, this past year. This will be my first Christmas without him. And that's a sad thing. Our whole family grieves his loss. We miss him. But my dad knew Jesus. And my dad's life was filled with this blessed hope. Not only that he is with Jesus today, but that one day soon Jesus is coming again. He's coming again to redeem all things, even death itself. And that's my hope as well. So as we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate Jesus coming into the world as our Savior. And that's cause for great joy. It is. But I want us to remember this Christmas that it also holds the promise of Jesus coming again. His second coming, when he will come as our glorious King to rule for all eternity. And that's cause for great hope. So may this blessed hope in the second advent fill your hearts and your minds as you celebrate his first advent. And so from the coffee household to your household, we wish you a blessed and a very Merry Christmas. Chapel Street Church family, welcome to the uh, Fraser home in our family room. Thank you for letting us into your home on this Christmas day. 
We've heard from each of our campus pastors about the anticipation we have, the delight and joy we have in Jesus, and from Pastor Brian about our future hope, how this day points us to the day when we will be with him for all eternity. Before we go, I want to share with you one more thought. You know, as great as this day is, what often happens in, in my life, and I bet in yours as well, is there's a mad rush to get to Christmas Day, and then in a flash, it's over. Trees and decorations are put away, uh, toys and wrapping paper are put away, and, and we're moving on to a new year. There's a part in C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia, in the last battle, the final book, when the children are under attack and they flee to a stable on a hillside. And the king of Narnia at that time is in the stable and he discovers inside that it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. That is, inside the stable, it opens up into a whole world called Aslan's country. And he can't believe it. A beautiful blue sky, far green hills. And Lucy Pevensey says, oh yes, in our world, a stable once contained something inside that was bigger than the whole world. That's the message of Christmas. John chapter 1 tells us that the Word, God himself, became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory full of grace and truth. How can a stable contain something inside that's bigger than the whole world, bigger than the universe? That's the miracle of Christmas. So I just want to encourage you, as you move on with this Christmas day and the days to come, our celebration as a culture cannot contain the power of the message. Jesus transcends even the beauty of our cultural season, and he's with us every day from this day until the last day. He is our anticipation, our joy and our delight, and our future hope. So from all of us at Chapel Street Church, Merry Christmas to you and to your family. We wish you all of God's blessings and a happy new year. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this gift you've given which we can barely comprehend, that you came into our world, took on flesh, dwelled among us because you love us. May we anticipate you, delight in you, and look forward to the day when we'll be with you forever. We give you all the praise and glory, Lord Jesus, our Emmanuel. Amen. Amen.